Now, the United Nations' top human rights official has expressed concern after Hong Kong lawmakers approved a controversial new national security law. The legislation is an extension of an existing law that was passed in 2020. It gives the government greater powers to suppress dissent, mirroring laws in mainland China. It was a demand of China's communist government in Beijing, which has been increasing its authority over Hong Kong. Now, Phoebe Kong was there for the vote in Hong Kong, and I asked her why this new security legislation was fast-tracked. Well, um, the bill was just passed in this chamber of Hong Kong legislature that we can still hear the cheers um, of, the uh, of the 89 pro-Beijing lawmakers and the officials who are now celebrating the passage of the law. It took only 12 days uh, for, to have the bill um, tabled for the final round of scrutiny in this very cham chamber and get it passed um, since it was first released uh, earlier this month. Um, that was the time when the public had the first chance to uh, really to look into the details of the wordings and the penalties of the over 200 pages of legal clauses. So um, the uh, chief executive John Lee has just delivered a speech in the chamber and told lawmakers and the public that the law will come into effect on 23rd of March, that is the coming Sunday, uh, the coming Saturday, sorry. And um, that um, this is, uh, he described it as a historic moment for Hong Kong to finally uh, accomplish its constitutional duty, which is stipulated in uh, the city's mini constitution, Article 23. But and on the other hand, political analysts also say this could be a tactic of the authorities to get it passed so quickly um, that um, it catch almost like all of the uh, pressure groups overseas and, all the, and, and many observers off guard that um, it's harder for them to like, really respond in a short period of time. All right. DW correspondent in Hong Kong, Phoebe Kong. Thanks so much, Phoebe. We're joined now by Nathan Law, a former Hong Kong lawmaker and activist now in exile in London. Thanks so much for joining us, Nathan. Can I ask you yeah, what, it, what it is like for you to see this law be approved in Hong Kong today? It's definitely devastating and disheartening. I think a lot of Hong Kong people share the same feeling. Uh, the difference is if they are in Hong Kong, they are unable to express that. If we look through the consultation paper and the contents of the law, we can like put the, con uh, put the legal articles aside. Just look at how they express and how they see the world. It, it wholesale adopts the worldview of the Chinese Communist Party, which uh, it says that there are so many external hostile forces trying to subvert Hong Kong and uh, that is completely false. It has attributed all these uprisings and protests for the past years as a result of these foreign forces disturbing Hong Kong, which is also untrue. If you follow this worldview and seeing all these international organizations and foreign governments as your enemy, how come Hong Kong can still be open, liberal and international? I think this is a big question laying ahead. Mm -hmm. Nathan, tell us what this law will mean exactly for Hong Kong citizens. This law is another patch of national security law after the implementation of the first round of it in 2020. It um, really targets foreign nationals in Hong Kong, uh, foreign uh, organizations operating in Hong Kong, and also Hong Kong uh, organizations overseas. And it also poses a lot of threat to journalists and other civil society um, uh, stakeholders because, uh, for example, in the article of theft to um, uh, state secrets, it, it doesn't define clearly what these state secrets are. And investigative journalists could fall into this legal trap easily if they discover anything that the government wants to hide. So um, in general, it is another set of laws that allows the government to crack down the civil society and it increases the power for the government, for example, to arbitrarily arrest people, to break into people's home without a warrant and also really strengthen the penalties of uh, numerous different charges. You've made it very clear quite how far this law will reach. I mean, you have witnessed the erosion of democracy in Hong Kong firsthand. How much worse 
might things get, do you think? Well, of course, for some people, if they get accustomed to the way of living, to the political control in mainland China, they would think Hong Kong is just another extension of China. But in reality, uh, this, why Hong Kong is special is because it is kind of part of China, but it has a different system. So uh, for me, this is definitely a, a, another big erosion and damage to Hong Kong as an international hub, as a place which uh, should enjoy freedom and uh, rule of law and also eventually democracy. And for a lot of activists in jail, they are also really concerned because there are a lot of clauses that may add up their jail sentencing. Um, if we look at the implementation of the national security law in these around four years, uh, there are 100% of conviction rate when it comes to the tailor-made national security court. And the government has the ability to appoint judges and deny jury trials. All these things combined, um, we can definitely see the politics in Hong Kong is getting much more restricted and much more suppressive. How do you think the international community should uh, respond to this legislation? We've seen a lot of governments expressing their concern, uh, a lot of international organisations and parliamentarians also demanding more actions, for example, sanctioning on the individual officials. Um, for me, these are definitely good way ahead. But at the end of the day, the reason why Hong Kong has fallen into a authoritarian police state is because China's influence has been expanding and we and just there are just not enough deterrence for them to grow their authoritarian um, in the borders and also across the borders. So this is something I think uh, the one of the very important tasks international communities should act on and to strategize to uh, restrict that kind of authoritarian expansion from the Chinese Communist Party. Nathan Law, former Hong Kong lawmaker and activist, joining us from London. Thank you so much for your time today. Thank you so much.